guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. In today's video, I will be sharing with you some of my vision, the process that I go through of taking some of my thrift store finds and getting them ready to resell. If you are new to this channel, this is something I do along with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store finds, we take the unloved, outdated items, and we give them a new life. We are blessed to be able to resell them here locally in an antique mall. We have a couple retail booths. Well, here's some little mirrors that I had thrifted I just couldn't pass these up the, <laughs> though I have done the wooden one similar before that I had to remove blue spray paint blue paint off of so I was happy to have it in wooden but there was just something about the details of these other three that I just couldn't leave them behind that I knew that I had to give them the ginger chick paint job and even though I there's all that detailing in there that I knew that was going to a pop so not just to make a video just on those few mirrors that aren't very big, that are probably going to take a tool at a time, that I have some of these resin pieces and these metal pieces. So I'm going to be sharing with you what I'm going to be doing, what my vision for these items is to get them ready to resale in our booth. So the first thing I have to do is take off price tags and any pieces and parts. And I have to say this was very ingenious to put a little bead, wrap some string around it to make a hanger. Hey, you do with what you have. And I thought this was ingenious. And I have to say that I've never really thrifted something like this. And I don't know where the rest of those little crystals are. But I'm just going to be removing these crystals off the other one to make it so it is a matching pair. Like I said, I don't know where they went or if somebody started to do that and then thought it was too hard. I just took my tin snips and cut that metal because I'm not going to be reusing them. They're actually plastic pieces, so it's not like they're heavy glass. Now I did share with you all this beautiful candlestick that is flowers and that somebody added a third flower to it but since it's not part of the original piece I am going to be removing that flower but I am going to keep it because it is another metal flower. And then I'm going to adjust some of these petals though well, I have one fell off that happens and that um, they are kind of crushed i don't know from being stored or whatever it is so i'm just going to straighten them out so uh, one thing i can suggest if you are a flipper and you do metal items get some of that jb weld that two-part jb weld and this is the way that you can fix it so it's just a two-part epoxy it comes in a tube like this you put it on something else to mix the two together with a little spatula popsicle stick and then you attach it and then clamp it on and let it do what it does and adhere the two pieces together well, now i had already gone through and removed all the tags any price tags any store tags taking anything apart and i'm getting ready to clean and i'm just using some super clean in a hot bucket of water to wipe all especially these metal pieces down you want to get any grime any residue left behind that will stop your paint from adhering to them so then i did go back through with the stars before i cleaned it and sanded that paint smooth it was actually an unfinished chalk paint so i sanded any of the drips off that i could and then watered it down and that removed a lot of it and got it that nice flat surface area that i was looking for so as i was wa washing these little birdies i remembered coming across a pottery barn where they had painted the little birdies black and they put them on some just natural wood pieces. And I'm like, hmm, I paint a lot of little birdies and they do sell, but why not? I have this box of thrifted <laughs> pieces of wood. Why not try this out? So I think I'm going to do that. So now that I've got everything cleaned and it is dried, I am taping off the areas where I don't want paint to get into. And on this little coin bucket, I don't want to paint the inside of this and the inside of the lip of the lid because it goes inside and I don't want that up and down and taking it you know, apart to wear off the paint. But I do want to protect that little brass coin saying on the front. So I just put some masking tape over it and I'm just cut cutting around it with an exacto knife. 
And then I have this little lantern, though I really thought I was going to be able to take all the pieces and parts of the manufactured brass out of this kind of a bohemian type of lantern. I could not, so I have to tape off all that, but that's where that clear contact paper that I always have on hand comes in handy. And so not to forget about the mirrors, I need to assess and the back of this mirror actually said it was manufactured in Hong Kong. So how old do you think that is? Is it a cardinal sin to be painting this piece? But remember, it was $2 and it is plastic at a thrift store. So it was actually neat how they had the backing in their little plastic tabs that I was praying that I did not break off. And I'm not going to be painting the back of this, but I'm taking all these mirrors apart to be able to paint them separately. So my first layer of paint going on these pieces is Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in one in the flat black. I absolutely love how this goes on, the smooth coverage. I can cover all the surface area. And when it comes to metal and resin pieces, the adhesion is just wonderful. So I take them into our spray room, put them on our Lazy Susan, and I carry them back and forth on these little pieces of boards. But I just absolutely love having this Lazy Susan to be able to get this 360 spray coverage on these pieces. So I do have this little butterfly clip and I just absolutely love the bottom of this piece. But some of those little rhinestones are missing. So it was a dollar nine. What a great deal. And so all I'm doing is taking some of that ink chalk paint and I'm covering up the little butterfly just to give it a little bit of color. I didn't want to spray paint it and I didn't want to take the time to tape use a whole bunch of tape on this little bit of an item but I know that this would adhere and I just like I said I love that bottom already as it's silver. So now before flipping these pieces over and getting the other side, I am sealing the one side in with polycrylic. What I try to do with my first coat is try to get the most coverage I can with the first coat of the black rust-oleum. And now I'm just using the polycrylic. And I do know that this just sprays out differently. It just is a nice fine mist. And with a new can or keeping that can, that little head spray head nice and clean, it will keep continuously spray and I do have occasionally where it does spurts and little spits up too much and I kind of try to save that for the wood pieces where it absorbs in differently. Then about an hour later I can flip them over and then I can do the same process to the other side where I spray paint that Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black, let that dry, and then polycrylic over it so they all have their complete coverage of black. So I'm glad the first coats went on a nice and smooth on this little frame. And as you see, I get to go in with a little bitty brush and go in all the pieces and parts. Just put something on Netflix and a paint away. I am using the Waverly chalk paint in the white. And I just absolutely love how these type of these plastic, these metal these resin pieces how i'm able to paint this on i do have to water it down just a little bit even with the first coat but i do like how i can distress it at the end so that's why i've kind of switched over for my kills because sometimes when i'm using my kills and i have to just use sandpaper and i can't water distress it sometimes i the sandpaper goes down to that original color that i don't want so that's why i have kind of switched over a little bit more to this waverly chalk paint and you all have helped me learn how to use it properly to get the best distressing out of it mm -hmm. 
So you know, if you watch me do flowers, I just, I love to paint them black and then go in and just add some detail to the petals. So that's exactly what I'm doing with this candlestick. I'm just going in and just visually imagining what God would have done with these petals if they were in color. But you know, I'm black and white, so this is just what works for me, but I just absolutely love doing the petals of a flower. And then for the outer petals, I'm just going to try to grab on to that little rim of the outer petal. So do you all paint with a whole bunch of different size brushes for these projects? Yep, I am. I just have a whole bunch of different brushes that I'm painting with for this one. So now for these star pockets, I'm just going to go in with some of the Waverly white chalk paint and I'm just going to gingerly go along that rolled edge of that black. I'm going to try to leave that black. I'm kind of doing my version of enamel wear, but I'm not going to, I'm going to try my best to keep a steady hand, but I know that that Waverly ink paint matches the Rust-Oleum paint perfectly. So if I do end up touching, I can go back in and clean it up. Then I am going to be doing the same thing with this bucket. I'm going to be taking a small little brush and I'm going to be gingerly going around those little handles trying to leave those black and leaving the rim of this bucket also. I love the little ribbing, the raised ribbing around it. And like I said, it's just my version of enamel wear. And then I can switch over to the bigger brush to, to cover more surface area. And then for me, for the family sign, yes, I could have painted it around the letters of family, but I'm just going to cover the whole thing. I'm going to go back in and distress the letters out. So this, if that was, is what works for you to leave the letters out, go ahead. But for me, I just paint over the entire thing and then distress it afterwards to show the family. So as I move on to my second coat of this Waverly White chalk paint, playing my round robin game where the first piece that I start is now dry. And yes, I am painting the interior of this star, this little envelope, even though I will be adding some type of greenery to it. I have to say, I really like this brush. I happen to go into the Five Below store when I was out thrifting. I saw another YouTuber do a little thrift haul that she made over some items though I didn't see anything that I felt as if I could make over but for five dollars for a pack of 10 paintbrushes and they were that soft for this chalk paint I thought that was a great deal and what do you think about painting an item uh, like this as I move on to my second coat of paint on this frame is just absolutely beautiful it's hard to believe that it's plastic but I just know that I have to not put a lot of paint on my paintbrush because I don't want to have drips. That's really going to make a very messy back. And yep, and just go at it, watch some TV, listen to some music, and just get that second coat on. And as you see, of course, yep, I have that turntable underneath that is just, if you don't have one, I notice a lot of people are starting to do this too. Just, it is a game changer of just being able to spin it on a board like this. And watching these pieces transform with that second coat, I just, as I, I know that I've switched over to this chalk paint, but I do love how it covers now that you all taught me how to water it down and how soon to distress it afterwards. I can tell you for my small items like this and my metal items and the way that I can distress it, I just absolutely, it pretty much, I have to say, coats in two um, covers in two coats but and I do go back and check out any spots to see if they need a third coat but pretty much it's coated in two and then I switched over to this fan brush to go around the handles and I have to say 
wow, it actually did a better job than that little bitty brush because I was able to leave a lot more paint behind. Sometimes when I'm doing that little bitty brush around the handles, I've got to go in four or five times to get it to cover. But this one is just fanning out so nice being able to go up and around that little handle. So as I'm waiting to paint to dry, aren't we always waiting for paint to dry? I'm going to play around with these three blocks and these three little birdies though the pattern on the two blocks does not match up so i thought i'm just going to offset it a little bit it is what it is i'm gluing them on a piece of wood but i absolutely loved that pottery barn i guess you'll call this a dupe how i'm you know taking one of their ideas and using them into my own so i'm using a little bit of the e6000 which is a great permanent glue and a little bit of my ca glue because that dries a little bit faster i want these to be a permanent bond so why not use a double glue but i don't want it to be thick so i don't want to add hot, hot glue because a lot of times i find hot glue kind of raises up the item and i want it to stay nice and flat so I don't know about you all, but oh my gosh, I absolutely love how this flower is turning out. Well, I need to seal in that chalk paint that I painted on this, so back to the polycrylic I go just to give it a light spray. So I do have some of my pieces that are staying black, so I need to go in and do some distressing. It's the look that I like. And so what I do is I take some 220 sandpaper and I go at uh, any sharp edges. And for this wooden mirror, I'm taking it all the way down to that natural wood just to get that pop where you can show some more details. And then I go in with some fine grit steel wool and then go over the rest of the entire piece and so what this is going to be doing is going to take that shine off that was left behind by the polycrylic and then it's going to open up that polycrylic to do my next step so that it accepts this antiquing wax and for this metal bless sign once it was black i really thought that i would try to do it in white and make a shadow effect but I just didn't feel like I could get that would be clean lines. So I just stopped. Yep, sometimes you just stop. And so I am actually sealing this in, giving it that rich tone with that antiquing wax also. I just like that extra step of protection to our products. And also I like the richness that this black, this antiquing wax gives to this black. So now all my white chalk paint should be dry and now I can go in and distress and that's how what you all taught me is the sooner you do it the better and the easier it comes off and you are definitely right. Yep, no more waiting overnight for paint to dry and not being able to get it off. So now I'm just taking some, I use warm water, I don't know if that makes a difference and so I'm just going in with a, a little rag and a piece of which is usually a piece of drop cloth, and I'm just going in and water and distressing it. And for some of these pieces, I'm just taking this very used piece of 220 sandpaper and getting that um, black to pop underneath a little bit sooner, and then just wetting it. So you just figure out what works for you and how much rubbing you want to do with your wet distressed. And so far, I don't want to go down to the natural color with the sandpaper, so I don't want to use anything really strong but I do want to if I wet that chalk paint just a little bit and then go in with this very used piece of sandpaper I'm not going down to the original color and I'm just kind of getting these letters to pop a little bit faster And then as I'm working and water distressing and sanding and, you know, getting all this distressing that I want on my pieces, I'm looking at any of the edges, any of the backs, or anywhere that I think that it needs a little bit of touch up. Sometimes when I'm water distressing it, I can get it to rub off and sometimes it's just on there. So I have found out that this Waverly ink <laughs> chalk paint matches that Rust-Oleum perfectly and then I can go in with a little detail brush and clean up any edges that I need. And yes, I do need to seal it in with a little polycrylic, not when I go to wax it because the wax will kind of smear it and make gray on my white. I do need to spray it a little bit with some polycrylic, but wow, this stuff matches that Rust-Oleum paint perfectly. And now that I have everything just water distressed or a little bit of sandpaper distressed, I'm going in and sealing this chalk paint in using some of this Verithane finishing wax. This is just our go-to wax. I found when I used the Waverly wax that it tended up to start distressing the piece a little bit more. So I already, you know, that's that, I guess, 
that perfectionist in me, I'd, I already chose where I wanted it to be distressed. I didn't want it to be distressed anymore. So uh, we love this varathane wax. We only can get it at the Home Depot in the natural color. And it's just a wipe on and a wipe off and let it cure. Yes, I'll go in and do that to all these pieces. Though there are some pieces and parts like these mirror frames that are really hard to go in and wax. So what I will do with them is just give them a light misting of that polycrylic spray. Just you need to seal that chalk paint in with something. And so where I cannot get it to the wax to seal it in, I will use some of that polycrylic. So I kind of got ahead of myself as I already stuck the floral foam in and my grass going, oh yeah, that's right. I need to put a hanging system on this. This had that two holes on the side that the person was very creative with their beading and their string. I am not going to try to let it hang from the back. You're still going to see that the way that I'm going to do it, but it's okay because I did thrift this black wire for 50 cents. So one of those another God wink moments, you don't really run across back black wire too much. So I'm just doing a simple loop and then making sure that it's nice and tight and making sure that the end on the tip where I had cut it isn't going to be poking anything. So I really clamp that down. It's not going to be poking a person or the wall behind it. Now for these little star envelopes, I can't go super crazy because they there's really not a lot of room in there to put anything. When I put that floral foam in there, I I really only put a quarter of it in of that little four pack block that you get from the Dollar Tree. So what I'm doing is I really need to snip these down, but you definitely want to leave that wire on there because you want to be able to have something to poke into that foam. So I am actually making one of the stems. This is the Walmart smaller version of their lavender that's a dollar 47 and so what i'm doing is i'm cutting it into two pieces one step into two pieces and a three piece and then a two piece like i said you definitely want to leave that wire and it's funny because look at how different these two look one's a little bit brighter and one's a little bit more dusty so i'm actually going to mix the two together because i really like the dusty one a little bit better so what i do is i get my center piece my height right in the center and then i'll work back and forth to each side until it's visually appealing to me. And then I will be filling in with some other little greens around the front so that it's nice and full. Even though it's gonna be a small package, I still want it to look full. So those greens were something I took out another envelope, but I just wanna use some of the greenery in there, something to hide the stems of that lavender, kind of tie this all together so it just doesn't look like I just stuck some very wispy lavender into a little pocket. It's okay to cut things up and just use the greenery to make it look a little bit more full so you can really, I wish that dollar store grass that the ones that I thrift or even that they have, it was a little bit more green than brown, but you take what you can get. So I'm just filling in with all these little leaves just to make it look nice and full at that, at that base. And then I did put a different hanging system on the back of this tin of family sign. It had that double hanger where you have to put <laughs> two screws in your wall. So nope, I'm just going to make it easy for the person buying this. Oh, I'm so excited. My new stamps came just in time to finish up this bucket. Though I thought I was going to leave it plain because I didn't think they were going to come, but here they are. These are kind of the stamps I was looking for when I accidentally got those transfers, but I still love both of them and I am so excited about that B. So the first thing I had to do is make my round object stand still. <laughs> That's not always an easy task, but I do love this hack of using Yep, roller, lint roller brush, those little sticky ones, and they just keep it right in place. They attach to my mat and they attach to the bucket. So I'm just kind of eyeballing where I know that I love. These bees always sell well for me, so I'm excited to have a stamp of it. For my round objects, I like to use one of these flexible measuring tapes so I can know that I'm at least centered. I'm not worried about the up and down, more of the side to side. I got so excited to use my brand new stamp that I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no, be. I'm glad that I did that. Before I put it on my object, I'm like, okay, well, why don't I just show you the difference between not sanding them, pre-sanding them, and then sanding them. So this is the first one that's kind of airy is the one that I did not sand the stamp. And the second one is where I sanded the stamp. So there definitely is a big difference especially when I know I'm not going to get that dark on top of a round object that 
is a little scary to be putting it on anyway, but at least you know there is a difference in pre-sanding it. So I'm using that Stay On and Jet Black ink pad. So as we all share our 101 ideas of how to get these stamps onto a round object, so I'm trying the hack of using that vellum paper that comes with the stamps to see if I can get that on. It's almost like you need, you need more hands. You need somebody to hold that down and then you to be able to press it. But I'm doing the best that I can. I love all your suggestions and sooner or later we will all figure out how to get these on a round object perfectly. Well, imperfectly. It's okay. It's the stamping 101, I guess. And after I let that stamp dry a bit, I'll take it outside and I'll put some clear acrylic spray on it to make sure that it's good and on there. So now it's time to finish up and I need to get these mirrors back into their frames. And my go-to for cleaning mirrors and glass are these Norwex cloths. Love that there's no chemicals. You just use the wet cloth and use the dry cloth and look at how clean it makes these. These, these have been sitting in the workshop. They've been thrifted. They have whatever is on there. <laughs> Who knows? They're thrifted items, but it does make them nice and clean. It's just always a personal preference if you want to tape off or if you don't want to tape off. I feel as the most I don't have to scrape on that, that glass and that I accidentally scrape it. You know, this vintage glass, I don't, I don't know how well it's made. So I don't want to accidentally scrape it or accidentally break it. So I just take the time to take it off. Like it is whatever you choose to do. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and as always what was your favorite 
flip. I just absolutely love taking these thrift store finds and giving them new life. Not only is it fun going out and hunting for them, because when you're hunting, you have no idea even what you're hunting for in the thrift store. So I guess that's what the excitement is. So thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this kind of content, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell.